Hey everyone, welcome back to build a single page application with jQuery and Ajax. In today's lecture what we're going to do is go over the two main get and post methods that we use with Ajax and I'll go ahead and show you how I include jQuery into my Express project. So this is my code right here. Currently inside of the views directory I have some partials that are included in all of my views and the footer partial is where I have my jQuery. So here is the CDN from jQuery. For development purposes, we'll just go ahead and use the CDN. If you are using it for production, then you probably want to use something like Bower or just download the files and install them locally. This is what allows us to use the jQuery syntax in our project. Then what we can do is include a client-side JavaScript file, and at that point, we can use jQuery inside that file. So if we want to include a file for JavaScript, we'll go up to the public directory, right click, create a new file, and we can just call this one ajax.js. We'll save that, and get rid of that. Back here in our footer, we just want to be sure that we include this ajax file below where jQuery is included. That way we can use jQuery inside of that file. So I'll actually include it below the bootstrap CDN. So we'll just put a comment here and we'll tell it that it's the ajax.js file. And then we can put a script tag with a source and we can just send it to ajax.js. And we'll send it back to root, which is public. Okay, so what this allows us to do is include the JavaScript file in any of the pages that has the footer included inside of it, which in this case is the edit page, the index page, and the new page you can see where we've included the footer at the bottom. Okay, so just to make sure that it's working, we'll do a alert function. We'll say this works, and then we will run our server. So get Mongo running. We'll run no daemon. I can't find express. So a little quick, let me do a npm install. And now we can do a no daemon. And it says my server is running on port 3000, so we'll go over here and navigate to, here we go, localhost 3000. Okay, so immediately upon getting to localhost 3000, it gives me an alert message that says this works. So we know that the JavaScript file is connected. Now the question is, is jQuery working? So we can open up the Chrome developer tools with Mac, uh, we can use Command Option J, or if you're on PC, you can use, uh, I think it's F12 or Control Shift I, something like that. Now we're inside the console, and what we can do is just type the dollar sign. And if you see this function, AB return, yada yada, then you know that jQuery is in fact working. And if you want, you could select like, I don't know, the unordered list on the page. And you can see that it returns two unordered lists here. So that's good, we know it's working. At this point, what we want to do is write some jQuery to make an Ajax call to the server and see what it sends back to us. What I'm going to do is go back to our code and we will get rid of this alert, resave that file, and then down here in the app.js, this is where I have all of my routes, we will send a get request to slash to do's. And instead of rendering index, what we'll do is we'll send back some JSON. So in order to set this up to where it doesn't screw things up, we can say if rec.xhr, and then we can do a res.json. So this is using the response object that we have up here in our callback. And instead of using the render function, we use a JSON function. And this allows us to send back whatever data we have. In this case, it's the to-dos that we get back from our to-do query to the database using mongoose. And we're gonna send those to-dos to the front end via this res.json. So we'll just pass in to-dos here. And then we'll say else. And basically what we're saying is if the request is an Ajax request, then go ahead and send back the to-dos as JSON. Otherwise, if it's just a regular request, then render the index page and pass in the to-dos to the EJS templating engine. So if this is all working correctly, 
then over here in our Ajax, we can use dollar sign dot get. This is the first of the jQuery Ajax methods that we're going to use. In this case, it's the get request. We can send a get request to our API, and then whatever we send back with that res.json will be returned to us in the uh, success callback function, which we'll see here in a second. So get takes some arguments. The first argument is the URL, and then we'll have a callback to deal with the data that comes back. So the URL in this case, we're going to pass in a string. It'll be slash to do's. So if we go back to our app.js, we can see that we have slash to do's right here. So we're sending a get request to slash to do's, which is fielded by our app.get slash to do's route inside of app.js. Then we want to deal with whatever we get back from the server. So we'll pass in a callback here and we'll just call whatever gets uh, sent back to us data. And then what we'll do here is throw a debugger in here. If you don't know about debugger, it's just a simple tool that we can use in Chrome developer tools or in any developer tools where we throw a debugger in there, it'll freeze the code whenever it hits that line and then we can look at whatever variables are available to us. In this case, the data variable should be available to us if everything works correctly. So I will save this file. My other files are saved as well. Because we're running everything with no daemon, it has restarted our server automatically. And we can go back here. And now if we open up our Chrome developer tools and we refresh the page, we actually see the script has been run and we're locked up here. This is pause and debugger. Now, if we go down here and we hit escape, we can get our console. And at this point, what we want to do is take a look at the data variable. So this is data that came back here from the get request to slash to do's. So we'll look at it. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four objects. And my guess, well, I know, that those four objects are actually these objects right here, these four to-do items. So if we look at the first one, data zero, so zero is the first index in the array here, it's gonna pull up the entire object. So we have our object ID that comes from Mongo, and then we have our text property, and in this case it's go grocery shopping, right there. So we could take a look at the rest of them, document one, or data one rather, go to the gym, that's our second one, and then our third one and our fourth one. Uh, get some sleep and go to the park. Those are these here. So what we've done is we have sent a get request to the slash to do's route and then in a callback we get the data back from the server. The server handles that request here. If it's a XHR request which is a XML HTTP request, so Ajax, then we send back JSON. Otherwise, we just go ahead and render the index view with the to-dos uh, variable being passed into the EJS. So here, we had to do sent back to us. In this case, now it's usable to us under the variable name data. And so we can do whatever we want with that data at this point. So we're not gonna do anything with it. I just wanna show you how to send that request from the client side to the server side and then get that response back and now we have this data in the client we can do whatever we want with it we don't need to use a get request in our application because our initial get request to slash to do's gets handled by the EJS compiler so it actually passes in all this data and renders the view for us without needing to do anything with jQuery so we're gonna let the server handle that initial request and then for all the requests after that, the post request, the put request, and the delete request, we're gonna go ahead and do those with Ajax. But just so you get a comprehensive list of all the methods you can use, I want to include .get in this video. So the next thing we wanna do is take a look at the .post method.